Hey everyone, my name's Jake, I'm a mechanical engineer, and I'm here with the first-hand knowledge that you need to get any degree you want. And today, we're gonna to talk about the true cause of failure. I want you to think back to the last time you failed at something. Maybe it was a super difficult course, or a hard exam, or maybe it was just the last time you tried to get in shape. Now, I want you to ask yourself, why did I fail? What, what was the underlying, what really caused me to not have success? Was it just because you weren't smart enough? Or did you hit the absolute ultimate limit of your capabilities? But before we jump into it, if you're looking to graduate with a great GPA without sacrificing your happiness and physical health, be sure to check out my book. It's called Becoming an Engineer, The Average Person's Guide to Getting Good Grades and Succeeding in Engineering or STEM School. It's really everything any student would need that's pursuing any difficult major, okay? This book is the collection of the knowledge and methods that I use to increase my GPA from 2.0 to a 4.0, okay? It's, it's everything that students wish they knew from the start. Um, no joke, if you implement what this book teaches, your grades will increase or I'll give you your money back. Uh, it's available in ebook and paperback on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description and thanks for your support. Okay, so let's get back to it. Why did you fail? Why did you fail that test? Why did you fail that course? Why couldn't you get into shape? Was it because you hit your limit? Were you not good enough? Were you not smart enough? I don't think so. Maybe, but I, I'm willing to bet that if you, uh, if everything was on the line, if you made that thing, that test, that course, whatever, your absolutely number one, no questions asked, number one priority, you would have found a way to succeed. What did you say? Now maybe, maybe that kind of made you mad, right? That class, that test, you know, whatever you, whatever you failed at was super hard, right? It was so hard that it caused you to fail. I get it. I get how there are difficult things. Um, things that might seem out of the realm of your capability, but let me, let me put it this way. Let me ask you this. If, if I were to offer you one billion dollars, okay, two billion, five billion, whatever, billions of dollars to succeed at that thing that you failed at, literally, if that money was sitting in front of you, would you then find a way to succeed? Hmm? I think if you're honest with yourself, the answer is, yes, I would have found a way. I make that point to break down, you know, students' misconceptions on why they sometimes fail. You know, they fail at something and they're quick to say, oh, uh, I'm just not smart enough, or I, I just don't have it in me, my IQ isn't high enough, you know, my God-given abilities, I wasn't blessed enough, right? Get that BS out of your mind right now, it's poisonous. So, when it comes to engineering in STEM school, Failure is not a function of your IQ or your, your you know, God-given abilities, whatever. Failure is a function of preparation, plain and simple. If you prepare adequately, you will succeed, period. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, your raw talent, your, your smartness level, uh, they do play a role in your success, but really only at the beginning, okay? It's not as much as you think. Let me explain. Okay, so I want you to imagine a race, right? Here's the finish line. This is success, right? This is this could be getting an A on an exam. This could be passing a course. This could be graduation itself, right? This is where everybody finishes. It's the same for everybody. You'll notice that the starting point for everybody is not the same, however, right? On one end of the spectrum, you have the kid that came into college with 70 AP credits that's been studying advanced science and math their entire life, right? They've, they've spent a lot more time priming and strengthening their brain than maybe you have, right? Even though they might be younger than you or even the same age, might feel like they're, uh, they just have more skill, more talent. Uh, I think there's a lot more that goes into it. So they start typically a little bit closer to success, right? And then over here, you have some other kids, right? This was me oh. going into college, right? I didn't uh, go past Algebra 2 in high school. I got a 17 on the ACT. I barely studied longer than a few hours throughout my entire high school career. So my pathway, my the amount of time and energy it takes for me to properly prepare for success is a lot longer than this person, right? 
but that doesn't change the fact that proper pre preparation is what determines your success, right? Mine might be longer than other kids, but it still comes down to the same thing. Proper preparation is what will determine success or failure. Now, as you continue to properly prepare, what typically happens is these starting points tend to come together, right? Your abilities will catch up to this kid's abilities over time. So the main point I wanna make with that is, is that even though all students kinda of come into school at different starting points, right? Everybody comes in at different levels of study experience, it still comes down to proper preparation, right? Even though uh, the amount of time and energy it will take for you to succeed will vary among all your classmates, the fact remains that in order to avoid failure, you must properly prepare for success. So the next step would be you defining what proper preparation is for you personally, right? And I'll get you started with that. So next time you fail, next time you struggle with a homework assignment or an exam or whatever, uh, don't, don't start questioning how smart you are. Don't blame it on, I'm just not smart enough or I, I just, I don't have it in me, right? We already went over that that's not true, right? Um, those types of thoughts close the doors on improvement, right? Instead, next time you struggle, I want you to ask yourself one question. How could I have prepared better? When you ask that question and you're honest with yourself, your brain will start to come up with solutions, start to come up with answers to that question, right? Maybe you could have done this differently. Maybe you could have done this better. Write those answers down and then implement them next time, right? Keep doing that every single time. Eventually, you will have come up with the process for you to properly prepare. There you have it. I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you found it valuable. Leave a comment, let me know your thoughts. Um, and don't forget to check out my book. But until next time, thanks for watching and keep up the good work.